two. Yeah, sometimes it'll just put in. <laughs> Hello. Hi, Annie. How's it going? Good. How are you? I'm good. Did you get your hair cut? No, I just actually blow, blow dried it for once. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, it's lovely. Thank you. Okay, everybody. Um, thank you. We had a very brief um, technical issue with logins and a demand for a authentication code that I didn't have. So um, after a quick call to Jay, um, uh, he wrote to the rescue and, and got us straightened out. So um, without further ado, at 7.04 p.m., I will call the um, March 15th Ides of March special edition uh, of the uh, South Grove Historical Commission uh, to order again. It's now 7.05 with that long-winded um, intro. Um, and we are at full strength uh, tonight at six uh, present Annie Pfaff, myself, Kevin Miller, I'm presently town of South Grove. If I get a moment, I'll change that. Um, Kate Battles, Jim Blaschke, this is as I see you on screen, Grant Farrington and our newest member, Michelle Hokinson. Um, welcome, welcome, welcome. Um, so you Thank know you. the, yeah, <laughs> a little applause works. I hope I can add um, some value to the team. I, I'm sure you will, I have absolutely no doubt. And you were approved, uh, what, at the meeting of the 28th, right? The select board yes. meeting, right? The interviewed and voted and um, Michelle has been duly sworn in. Uh, I understand you've also taken your uh, conflict of interest training. Uh, I think we're all, everybody's good on that. Um, so, oh, Annie, still. I know, I'm, I'm delinquent, but I, I will get it done in the next couple of days. I just, I, life's busy right now. Yeah, no, I understand. Um, it was much better this year, Annie. Yeah, was it? Okay. Yeah, the, Other the fact that you can't one. fast forward, but. Yeah. Uh, it's actually. Yeah, I, I actually find it very interesting. Um, yeah. You know, it was I, more pertinent, like better scenarios and all that stuff. And we are taking feedback about it because the state, um, that's pretty new and the state is still working on it. So if people have feedback on it, let us know in the uh, clerk's office. Great. Oh. Well, yeah, I thought, I thought it was pretty good. Um, I was just happy uh, they didn't have that question about the fruit basket. Oh, that's the one <laughs> I got wrong. <laughs> that on there last time? Yeah. <laughs> really? Oh, God. Um it, you know, it's, it, it's, it's interesting. I mean, I was, you know, paying attention and, um, anyhow, all right. I'm still a little discombobulated from that. You know, the stress hormones when the zoom isn't working. <laughs> at the, mm -hmm. Oh my God. It, it's unbelievable. Um, anyway, you know, Michelle, um, um, lives in a very historic house at, uh, 10 Maine. Is that right, Michelle? And yep, you're muted. That's okay. Um, but uh, and it, it there was a it was formerly a, a like had the post office window. It was the post office originally at one time. Right. So there's some historic parts of the house that we've actually found some old mail dating from the late 1800s. 
So oh. we have that in the attic somewhere along with all the other finds I'm found for the historic yeah. Michelle. Yeah, that, and, and Michelle has mentioned to me um, incidentally that um, you've, you've got some um, information sort of pursuant to the the origins of the drive for the National Register District, which I think is going to be really nice for us to go over and, um, you know, try to, um, I think maybe around the time the sign, hopefully the signs are erected this summer that we can sort of give some um, retrospective credit where credit is due in that regard. Um, I know, you know, some of the early movers that were involved in it. And it also goes, um, I, I um, just by the by, um, had um, talked with Michelle about this um, relative um, to some questions about what the boundaries of this new National Register District are, because, you know, I, for me, I was coming in on it, you know, in the middle, um, and why they were drawn exactly where they were drawn and trying to sort of pin that down, because, you know, there'll be when the, especially when the signs go up, there'll be questions about that. Um, and, and some of the stuff that Michelle has actually uncovered, because you were, of course, in, involved. Actually, my husband was very, very involved, and I sort of was just tagging along with him at the time. But we, I, we have canceled checks from people that donated um, the initial $2,000 to investigate the, um, you know, to see whether or not we could get the money, the funding together to go to the state. So I have canceled checks and letters and and you know things from the state saying why they chose the boundary so hopefully we can get it to you kevin so yeah i think that i think that'll be really helpful um and, and and a nice thing for people you know when they see the science go up this is the why this is the how and these are some of the people who are you know behind it from the beginning so i i, I look forward to that um so M michelle is clearly going to be a big asset to us um and delighted to have you um Aboard. So without further ado, um, this afternoon, um, Annie and I um, toured uh, in the company of some St. Mark's folks um, led by uh, Rob Kuklovich, you know, the CFO of there, um, someone from their um, building committee, right, Annie? Um, you're muted. Sorry, yes, yeah, someone uh, from their facilities department. Um, Adam and then Kevin from the facilities department. Um, so there are five of us. Um, and we went through um, the uh, Peter School Annex building and also the old fire station. And it was a really, really interesting um, afternoon. Um, I, I guess I was there close to two hours by the time I finally left. And um, I took a bunch of photos. Um, inside and out. And, you know, this came up, um, I mentioned at our last, not the meeting on the 28th, of course, which was the joint meeting with the select board and the SHOPC and the um, Affordable Housing Trust Fund Committee, but in our, our regular meeting back on February 16th, that, you know, a day or two before um, that meeting, Rob had reached out to me um, with the information that St. Mark's um, wanted to move forward with uh, raising both of those buildings, the Peter School Annex and the fire station. And, um, you know, as I indicated uh, during our meeting, uh, the, really that was a, a, a courtesy um, call on his part um, because as a matter of the demolition delay bylaw, we do not have jurisdiction um, over either one of those buildings. Um, the fire station having been built in 1978 and the Peter School Annex having been built in 1930, which is five years um, beyond the limit of our powers under the current iteration of the DDBL. So, you know, he was reaching out to me to let me know as a courtesy to talk about it you know, with me about it, um, and to offer just what we did today was a tour. Um, you know, I'd asked to get in there and sort of document photographically the building to see if there were any um, um, salvage uh, possibilities or, or, you know, reclamation possibilities, and, and to get also, um, you know, some firsthand insight on why um, they were interested in taking it down rather than possibly, particularly with regard to the Peter School Annex. Um, 
which is a um, you know a currently a contributing property in our new national register district. So, and you know, if you go and look at the MACRIS report on this building, um, and I would encourage people, you know, in the public to read it because you know this is always, and I I know I sound like a broken record to you folks, but um, the MACRIS database, right? It's the Massachusetts Cultural Resource Information System. Anybody can Google it. It comes right up and can get in there and find this sort of wealth of information um, on historic resources throughout the state. But it ends up being the sort of backbone of a lot of our, our information um, and decision-making with regard to the DDBL activity. Um, and you know, other initiatives in town, that this is sort of the go-to first resource. So when you go in and look um, at the MACRIS report on the Peter School Annex, um, it's, it runs to, I printed it out here, I've got about, it's about 14 pages. Um, and it includes um, some very interesting photos, um, historic photos of the high school itself, which is again, what the, the fire station replaced you know, we talked about this last time, and I showed a couple of those photos um, that that building, um, which was built in 1930, closed in 1959 um, with the advent of Algonquin and then demolished in 1962, that that was the real jewel in the crown um, in that area and really arguably in the entire town. Um, and, you know, unfortunately lost to the wrecking ball um, in 1962. But so there are some photographs of that building in the MACRIS report on 19 Main. There's also interestingly and, and somewhat um, poignantly, I think, um, an application that was made um, in 2008 by uh, then um, South Pearl Historical Commission um, member Kate Madison, um, which I, I know some of you knew, um, and um, you know I know how important she was um, to historic preservation efforts in South Pearl, and was in fact the driving force I think behind the the National Register district we have and the sign mock up behind me um, that she had put in um, an inquiry about eligibility for that building individually. Um, and there, there's a staff opinion that's rendered in that report um, where they basically asked for a lot, a, a lot more information and they had questions. Um, but yeah, I mean, this was, you know, the point of this is that this was recognized, you know, uh, this is what, 15 years ago now. Um, and of course, before that is a very important building. Um, and so, it, you know, I don't think it's anything that anybody takes particularly lightly at all, um, or not at all. Um, but in any case, well, you know what, it, with your indulgence, do you want to see these photos? Um, I can run through them pretty quick, and I think it would sort of illuminate a lot uh, in terms of what's there. So I'm going to screen share, um, and you guys, someone can just because I won't be able to see it if you just let me know if you're seeing it okay. Um, and that's not super right now. I got to make those bigger. How's that? Are you getting that now? Yes. Yeah. Looks good, okay. Kevin. So this is this afternoon. Uh, these are shot. These are hot off my camera taken about three hours ago at this point. Um, and of course, you're looking up uh, the driveway on the east side um, of the property. Um, next to this, to your right, is a house also owned by St. Mark's um, number 17. Uh, so here's the driveway going up. This is shot right from the sidewalk on Main Street. And you can see the Peter School Annex is the building um, toward the rear and the right with the um, green copper clad uh, cupola. And of course, the fire station is to the left. Um, just another angle as they start moving up the driveway. Um, that's, of course, standing approximately right in front of the, um, the fire station, looking up at the building. The, the high school that uh, was raised in you know, 1962 
ultimately to make way for the fire station in 1978, as I understand it, set somewhat to the um, southwest of the existing fire station. So if you imagine this photo, off to the left, basically. Um, but that's the building. And again, it was built as an annex due to overcrowding um, and just space concerns um, at the Peter School itself. The annex was built, um, this is a federal revival style and built in 1930. Um, and you, know, you can already see as you approach the building that it's been altered quite a bit with sort of modern doors. Um, those are aluminum um, doors and sadly, with the exception of the Palladian windows on the south and north ends, um, you're looking at one now, um, all the other windows in the building <clears throat> are lost. They're, they're, some of them are aluminum um, and some of them um, in the what amounts to the front of the building are actually vinyl. Um, they're, they're basically modern um, windows. Uh, this is the sort of obviously the front um, entrance. You're looking um, east um, in this shot because the sun would rise obviously behind that build, behind the building. Um, these are obviously garages that were added um, at some point. I'm not. I don't have the exact date of those garages, but they were obviously, uh, I believe, 70s um, or perhaps later um, additions. This is the back of the fire station. Just if you turn from where I'm standing here, I just basically did a 180 and shot the back of the fire station. Again, this built in 1978. So now you're inside the Peters School Annex. And um, the last usage of this building was as a police station. And so it, remarkably, it's got a lot of... Um, in a way, remnants of its usage as a police station. This is sort of the dispatch desk or where you would, I guess, if you were a member of the public, you would walk in um, and to your right here would be a, where the dispatcher would sit. Um, and boy, they they haven't, <laughs> the, the current public safety building is certainly an upgrade over this. This is a pretty sad um, affair with uh, not much, um, remaining um, from what it once was, which is, you know, of course, a school. Um, there's some of the dispatch equipment that that still remains, um, just kind of sitting there, more or less, as I understand it, as the town left it, um, and they vacated for the new um, digs on Quarterville Road. Um, more of the equipment. It's unbelievable. And this was in use right in the last few years. Um, it's kind of amazing. Um, you're looking now behind, if you walk through that dispatch area, this, this is sort of a kitchen area, I, I assume used by um, officers. The jail, um, it's very interesting, very interesting. You, you enter, there are two entrances from it. This is from that sort of back hall on the east side of the building. Looking in, there are three cells. Um, if you walk around the, the sort of hall um, to come into the jail cells from another direction, um, you see these murals that were on the wall, police badges. That's a different view of the same hallway um, office. I'm not sure what the use of this particular room was. All the, both of the buildings are quite chopped up. Um, into many, 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 many um, rooms, very rabbit warren-like drop ceilings. So again, here's the cells. Um, if you were a, if you were a bad boy or a bad girl in Southboro, this is where you would have ended up. Um, there are three of these, uh, and it's kind of pretty interesting to see. I would say, um, again, I imagine the accommodations. Um, are much improved, although I, who knows? I hope not to find out. Um, bulletin board still in the wall uh, with some, probably for privacy reasons, data erased. Um, 
This is looking, uh, that's a staircase going up uh, to the second floor. And this is on the, now you're facing north. So you're seeing another one of these, uh, what I believe are the only two surviving um, windows in the joint. Um, they're both on, you know, again, on the north and south facing ends of the building. Um, this is down basically uh, basement level. There's a equipment and you know boilers. That's the um, oil furnace you see to the left of that that photo. Um, I inquired of the St. Mark's folks about their their some ginormous radiators um, in the building, and you know whether or not there's any. I was really looking hard, and Annie was as well. That sort of any salvage opportunities. There's not much, um, if any. Um, I had, did ask about the radiators. Um, this was, a, as I understand it, a workout room for the officers. Um, again, in the, another section of the basement level. Um, and you can see what the sort of sub-basement or lowest level of this building is like. It's prone to water. It, it, the whole place sort of doesn't smell too great, um, to be quite honest. Um, not in inspiring condition. Um, oil tanks gives you some idea of the sort of infrastructure of the building and the electrical equipment, um, communications equipment, and so on. As I understand it, uh, let's see, this is one of rooms. I think this was a filing room. And then this was um, interesting. You see the active drug cases, um, those are empty. <laughs> um, but this was the, uh, as I understand it, an evidence room. And um, also I believe if um, the St. Mark's folks were correct, used the store of ammunition. Um, and there you see that I, I believe these were sort of evidence bays. Um, so the building is in very, very rough shape. Um, inside another large radiator, just is out in the hallway. One of the notable things is that um, the wood flooring, um, to my best guess, is original. Um, and, you know, that's an almost impossible thing to salvage, but it was notable to me. And so I took a photo of it. Another enormous radiator. You can see, by the way, um, the windows there, those are the aluminum, you know, I, I'm guessing. Um, I don't know, put in the last maybe 20 or 30 years. Um, but there are no otherwise, other than again, those palladium windows in the north and south end, there's no original, um, anything like windows. Um, these are, I thought were interesting. These are dampers, uh, we believe to open like roof vents. It says to open damper, pull chain. And there are four of these in a, in a little room that's on the second floor. Um, Typical sort of classroom setup. This is on the second floor. I believe, um, yes, this was the, um, again, according to the St. Mark's folks, um, the room used by the police chief. Um, and they were making note of this um, air, um, Annie, what's the what's the right term? This sort of to get fresh air into the yeah, building. I think it's some air uh, air exchange. Air building. exchanger, yeah, because there's a real problem um, apparently in this building with, um, <clears throat> as I understand it, people were getting ill in it because of poor air quality, um, and so this was mandated just to make the building, you know, habitable. Um, is that correct? Mm -hmm. Yeah, during during the time it was there. So you get some idea that it's really a, a pretty jury rigged kind of um, affair. I, I mean, I'm obviously done with the safety of the occupants in mind, but it's not exactly aesthetically pleasing. Um, again, that's one of the, what I believe are the only two original windows. They have some sort of obviously opaque. Um, I don't know if that's an applique um, or a, possibly a fogged up storm on one side. Um, again, the equip the dispatch array. Uh, again, looking at the the accessory garages um, to the north of the building. And one last look, I think, at the building. Um, we discussed the cupola a little bit because this is one of the 
to me, one of the possibly, you know, you've got some woodwork obviously around the door and some, you know, that that's handsome looking um, entry. But in terms of major salvage components, um, I, and, and I think this is a feeling shared by the St. Mark's folks, um, I'm most interested in that cupola. Um, and I have made some inquiries uh, about it and they indicated a willingness um, to save it, to take it off and to store it and hope to find a home for it. And that alone, um, according to their, their uh, building uh, department guy is going to cost them fifteen thousand dollars to take down intact and salvage, um, but they're willing to do it. Um, and it would be lovely if we could find some kind of home for that in some way. So I'm putting the call out <laughs> um, to the public tonight. If anybody's got a bright idea for that cupola, um, reach out to the <laughs> chair of the historical society commission because I'd I'd like to um, find a way to save that. Um, now you're inside the um, 1978 fire station, and this is a kitchen, obviously, um, with a ginormous, um, very kind of impressive gas stove, which I believe St. Mark's is going to try to find a home for. Um, you're looking at a room that's adjacent. Um, that, that stuff that you're seeing in there, I believe St. Mark's was um, using this as a kind of infirmary, actually excuse me, during COVID. Um, and that's what those, I think those were to isolate beds, I believe. Right, Annie? Yes. Yeah, yeah. I, I think they even might have called it the infirmary. Yeah. Um, yeah, so they could quarantine. So the, the regular health services only has like six beds. Um, so if they had to quarantine, you know, a, a large number of students, they could, um, they, they used several of the rooms here for that. And I, I, as I understand it, they, St. Mark's had sort of painted and tried to do some. Um, yeah, like the flooring spru- here is new. Right, the carpet and, you know, uh, some sprucing up to, you know, obviously make it um, okay for students. It's uh, not exactly luxurious accommodations. Um, you know, every during COVID, I think everything was in a pinch, but um, that's what those objects are. Um, again, a lot of rabbit warren rooms, they're completely. I could have taken one photograph to suffice for about 15 of them. They're basically, you know, four walls and some outlets and some um, vinyl tiles on the floor and and whatnot. Um, Standard sort of corridor, fluorescent lit. um, Stairwell. Another room, again, they were more or less interchangeable. Um, Another corridor. Uh, this is a looks to be a removed um, bathroom. You can see the shutoffs at the left. Um, this is an interesting shot because you're actually standing off the the um, garage bays at the front, looking up, and that's straight up into that building itself has a kind of cupola at the top, um, and you're looking all the way up and that we had some debate on what that piping was and I believe it's actually sprinklers so that if the building had caught on fire it would have been um, essentially irrigated <laughs> um, top down. Um, bathroom, um, I assume, you know, used by the um, firefighters in the station, another the typical room, you know, cinder block or, um, wall board, a drop ceiling, a, a vinyl floor. Um, office, it gives you some idea, again, of the condition. Um, equipment that was left, routers, I don't know what that's the safe on the floor. Um, one thing we did come across, um, amazingly, was some paperwork and some documentation. And you can see it sitting there. And these are records, actually, uh, of the fire department, like equipment purchased and accounts receivable. And there was even some information, right, Annie, um, uh, connected to the advisory committee. Yep, yep. It said uh, for the advisory committee, and it was some budget documentation from the 70s. Right. So, uh, so this fascinating. is fascinating. Yeah, all like half century old um, 
documents sitting there in some of those cabinets and on top of that that equipment you see and so um annie and i both pounced on this and said well we'd like to have that you know and we'd like to go through it and i i said i would like to um at some point offer some of this stuff uh for chief vakili's um review because he might be fascinated to see you know the record keeping and the accounts and all that stuff for the fire department a half century ago um and so uh Rob uh, readily and happily agreed to that and they're going to go down there with some boxes and collect all that stuff uh, and turn it over to us and we can go through it and figure out into whose hands it should pass um but I I think for one thing um Chief Achilles and the the Southmore Fire Department would be a good candidates to have a look at this stuff and see if it has any meaning for them. Um, Kevin, so these I would also the, thank the, the town clerk's office, perhaps, too, if there's, um, you know, documents on meetings or... Uh, oh, absolutely. Like yeah. And, and of course, in our, our capable vice chair, we have the perfect uh, liaison to the clerk's office. So we'll, we're going to put her on that. Um, so, so now you're in the, the the garage base itself, where the you know um, apparatus was parked. St. Mark's is one van in there now. Um, this is where one of two fire poles came out, and it's now blocked off, and the poles have been removed. Um, looking now, this is out uh, obviously looking down toward Main Street and the gazebo at the foot of Peters Park um, through the doors. Kevin, yeah, just a curious. Go back to to um, to pick you out there. Are those actually doors that would close over the opening. Look at that. Yeah, they're like little like hatch. Imagine like a, one of those garbage cans you step on and the lid springs open. You know, this is like a three piece reverse garbage can. <laughs> Clearly, I haven't worked for a fire department, but yeah, Jim. I've I've been out for the uh, some of the ICBM sites. It looks like a missile silo to me, but never mind. <laughs> it, it does. It, but it looks a little bit two thousand and one kind of. You know, would slowly open and. But that's it. Yeah, there are two of those. Um, I just edited out one of the photos. Um, so let's see. This is an interesting one. This is looking again. You're looking straight up um, at the rear of the bays. There's this room. And I realized only after the fact, you can see on the right side, a ladder that goes way up. I mean, this is, you know, three stories high, this shaft. And I believe some fire department expert who watches this will correct me. I'm sure I hope, but I believe those, the poles you see sort of at the top of that photo were, are for like high, um, hanging hose. You know, like someone could go up there and there's a catwalk. You can see it. That's what that grating is. And this is a very disorienting shot. And it was pitch black. This is my flash illuminating this. Um, but you're looking at basically a shaft where I believe um, you could hang hose or other equipment, um, you know, to drain it and all that kind of stuff. So very interesting. This is sort of remnants of when it was uh, apparently... Um, active you know fire station or some whiteboard this is a, again a, a kind of boiler room in the fire station um obviously outside out front again this is a shot of the rear of the building now i'm i'm bringing you back to the peter's school annex because this is a shot from um the east side of the building sort of up at hard up against the woods it's a little bit, a little bit hairy getting in there with the ice and snow and brambles and whatnot. But it gives you some idea of the back of the building and um, those sort of unfortunate, you know, uh, but clearly useful um, replacement windows that are seen throughout the building. Um, that's another shot, again, from the same elevation. Um, that's some kind of access down to the, like a bulkhead down to the basement. Um, I did want to take a shot of, this is the, the sort of um, memorial plaque at the, the base of the gazebo that's down at the foot of Peters Park. Um, with Rob and I have had some conversation about this gazebo. Um, 
And um, they're inclined to um, leave it as it is at the, for the moment. And um, there's a very strong feeling that they, they would want to preserve this. Um, it may, may be able to get relocated slightly or moved. I would certainly actually think it would be more useful moved somewhat back on the property. So it's not so hard by the street. Um, but you can see there that, that it was um, um, dedicated or paid for by Peters High alumni, I believe, um, and I, which I, I, I guess makes sense, um, in October of 1986. Um, and that's a shot that just is not a very artful shot, um, but I was cold at that point. Um, so you're seeing the gazebo, you get the relative placement of the, the annex the fire station to the left um, and the gazebo down by Main Street. Lastly, um, I think I showed this at our last meeting. This um, again is the high school that was just to the southwest of the abandoned now um, fire station, you know, again, built in 1900. Absolutely. Um, magnificent building and this is you know the one that you know sadly was lost um you know now 61 years ago um and i think that's all i had so i'm gonna get out i hope that was helpful um it's and i i want to go around and give everyone a chance to sort of talk see you know say what you have to say about it i again my my own view of this is that you know seeing these buildings reinforced for me um, the incredible um, difficulty. And I did have a talk um, with a local developer um, in the last week on this matter, and you know his comments sort of correspond very closely to what um, the St. Mark's folks have said about this school is that the it, it it just doesn't work for them. Um, and the the cost to sort of make it um, up to contemporary codes um, and also um, energy efficient, um, safe in terms of, you know, it, they're, they're, by the way, they're sending in apparently um, teams to do sort of hazardous waste um, removal and remediation because you can't just demolish a building that, for instance, has a, may well have a likely has asbestos in it you can't just you know what i mean because it gets released into the air and that's not cool so <laughs> they have to have people go in and, and do very expensive um you know removal um prior to demolition but it it, it is not hard um for me to see um the what's driving this from a you know, uh, any kind of practical or financial um, standpoint. I, you know, and at the same time, I, I look at the macro support, I, I see, you know, um, the late Kate Madison's efforts um, on behalf of this building some 15 years ago that, you know, didn't get any traction. The other factor for me in this is that, uh, as I understand it, I think there was a pretty clear um, understanding among people in the town back when the swap of the golf course property was made for this, you know, the St. Mark's basically traded, you know, the golf course property for um, the property at 19 Main, that ultimately St. Mark's was going to um, have to move on from these buildings. And th they're at the point, and this is being driven, by the way, by the fact that, you know, they just constructed this um, very impressive dorm um, basically right through the woods behind it. Um, and while they have that that sort of construction infrastructure um, present on campus, this is why they want to move now, as I understand it. And my understanding is that the plan is to, um, that they have very ambitious um, plans that I think people in town will be quite pleased about. Um, they, they want to um, go slow on that, for now in terms of a public statement about it, which I understand and respect. Um, and that, as I understand it for the time being, their plan is to um, you know, remove all debris, grade it down and 
um, hydrocede the area. So you basically you'll be looking at a green sward um, until such time as they're able to sort of move forward with um, the very ambitious plans I think they have um, that are meant, um, I, I think I'm. it's fair for me to say, because I said it last time, that their plans um, are for um, a, a development that is not centered around the school per se, but that engages with both the school and the public. Um, so um, I think that will be a good thing. It can be very useful to the town. I, I am, you know, and I said, can I just say one thing? I, I mentioned this while we were on the tour today. As you know, on our last meeting, I think I was a little tired, a little punchy by the point we got to this stuff. And I said, um, speaking of the fire station, um, I, I copped to having called it um, a crappy building. And that was um, a mistake, may I say so? Um, and I was actually, I felt bad about it afterwards because of what I should have said, of course, is that it's a purely utilitarian building um, and that, uh, you know, it was built to serve a purpose that it doesn't have any particular, um, really any um, architectural or design kind of distinction um, that would warrant, you know, trying to save a, a 1978 fire station that was, you know, again, built purely purely as a kind of utilitarian structure. Um, but I, I felt bad, um, and that's the way I should have phrased it. Um, and I was thinking about this actually, you know, um, the small town in New Jersey that um, my mother's side of the family is from, um, most of the uh, civic buildings in that town, and a good many homes were um, built using brick or and or cinder block manufactured by my great grandfather's um, block plant. Um, my great, great grandfather started it, my grandfather ran it, they were both masons. Um, and um, so when I go to that um, down in New Jersey and, and I visit, um, I'm still able to see a, a good many buildings that were um, put up with my great grandfather's bricks um, and my grandfather's bricks. And, and in some cases they both worked on those buildings um, and some of them are gone, including the block plant um, as it happens. And I, 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 that was a most utilitarian building. I remember it from my childhood. Um, and when I go down there and I see that empty space, um, it, it kind of hurts a little bit, you know? Um, all of which is to say that it, it, it shouldn't have taken that reflection for me to think um, that every building, even the most utilitarian, has a story. And I, I have to admit, I, my bad feeling about having called the fire station crappy um, was intensified when a couple of days later in my Southboro, I don't know if you saw this, there were a couple of letters, um, not about us, but um, uh, people who wrote in on the news that St. Mark's was planning to take these buildings down and said, gee, I worked on those buildings or maybe worked in them, you know, like helped. And there were some, there were a couple of writers who, um, gentlemen who wrote in talking about having worked on building the fire station, you know? So I felt sort of doubly chastened actually um, that, you know, it, it's a reminder and a reminder I didn't need quite frankly, but I got anyway. Um, that you know all these buildings have a story they're all important um and you know i i so i respect and and understand for instance the history of the fire station um i have an even greater appreciation of it quite frankly um and all the work uh, you know the hard work that people put into it um that doesn't uh, particularly change my position at all um with regard to you know, they have every right to take it down. They are going to take it down. Um, and that's not a particularly a structure that I'm, I think um, from a, a, the standpoint of, of its architectural significance, um, not a debate, but again, the loss of every structure ends up becoming, you know, a little bit of a hole and a story that that is important to sort of, that's why I wanted to get down there and photograph today. Um, and to sweep up those documents um, that St. Mark's is very happy to turn over to us and try to do you know, as much as we can to make sure that we sort of honor the story. Um, and then with regard to the 
the the Peters High School annex, again, I, I find myself focused on the loss of the high school 60 years ago um, and, and feeling like um, this is where the ship sailed on, on that, that parcel. But um, I, at that, I would love to hear, um, I don't know, Kate, just sort of go around the horn and see if people have any thoughts or you know, what you want to say about it. Anything you're good? Um, Jim? Nothing? Um, Annie, you were there. Yeah, so I I had the um you know the opportunity to join Kevin on this uh, tour earlier today, um and you know I'll kind of echo you know some of the um you know some of the sentiments uh, from you know that Kevin has shared already, um you know at the end of the day unfortunately these buildings aren't under our purview anyway, um so it was kind of just a you know a, a good natured gesture that St Mark's was you know, giving us this opportunity anyway. Um, so one thing that, that you know, just a kind of um, commentary that really struck me um, about the police annex uh, in particular, you know, as Kevin mentioned, you know, it was, it's, you know, really chopped up and, um, you know, kind of the, the layout was really weird. And it was like, you know, go down, down this stairway and down to down that hallway. And it was just, it was kind of felt like a maze um, certain parts of parts of the building. Um, and, you know, one thing that it, it kind of made me think about was, you know, as we do, um, you know, as we do renovations to town buildings going forward, you know, just maybe we can, you know, be, I don't want to say intentional, but just be more thoughtful about that. So, mm -hmm. you know, today's buildings, you know, whether they were built 1925 or, you know, before or after, someday they're going to be historical. Um, and, you know, doing what we can do to be, um, you know, in, intentional about uh, the integrity of, of our existing buildings um, as we do future renovations, you know, to serve our purpose in the town. Um, because it was, it was quite, quite odd what they did to that building um you know looking looking back at that and you know of course it needs it needs to serve the purpose as you know the police station um but uh yeah it was it was kind of shocking um you know i agree that there's not a whole lot um you know that would be salvageable um you know i i do think that's that you know that's an amazing opportunity um to potentially relocate the cupola um, you know, that's, that's a special, special piece. Um, you know, even if we could somehow, you know, find a new spot for that, I feel like it would be a little win, um, you know, for historical, um, you know, but, but at the end of the day, you know, St. Mark's can do what they want. Um, and yeah, I don't, I don't want to say much more than that. You, you know, Annie, it's interesting that and and again, it, it said just as an observation that the civic use of of the changes, in other words, that the town itself wrought on the Peter School annex in using it and having gotten apparently you know good use out of it for a number of years as a police station. Mm -hmm. um, so in some ways. Um, I, I want to choose my words more carefully <laughs> than I apparently have in the, at points in the past, but I've so in some sense disfigured that building that mm -hmm. it's, you can understand when you look at it, you know, St. Mark's, the only usage that apparently they've gotten out of it um, in recent years is as a kind of staging area for construction. Mm -hmm. um, they were holding some, what surely had to have been some rather uncomfortable kind of construction and as opposed to let's say doing it out of a trailer um they were doing some you know looking over designs and um kind of thing in that building but as you as you saw it's not a building that you really want to spend time in no um, no so to, to be honest um so there was uh one level that had what you know i probably not i can't say for certain but 90% sure was asbestos tile 
loose asbestos tile coming up off the floor. And I didn't even really feel very comfortable being in that space. Um, so. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, um, Grant, did you have? Um... Oh, I had one other oh, thing. Sure. I'm sorry, no, I, I did just came to me. Um, you know, so you were saying, Kevin, how it, um, you know, had housed some recent construction meetings. Um, what I also thought was really interesting is that it's it's in a way currently being used as a greenhouse of sorts. Um, I don't know if Kevin mentioned this before, but their um, their their facilities uh, team is keeping some plants in there, um, and the plants look like they're thriving. Um, and the natural light uh, coming through those windows in the front um, is really really lovely. Um, so I'm glad that they are getting getting that use out of it. Um, and I'm, I'm all set, thank you. Okay. Go ahead, Greg. Yeah, um, thanks, Kevin. I, um, I have a few thoughts. I think I differ uh, a bit um, from what's been said. Obviously, I, I wasn't able, unfortunately, to um, attend the walkthrough. Um, I was able to yesterday, but I had a conflict today, so couldn't make it. Um, I, I am totally in agreement on the uh, fire fire station 1978. I don't think it has any um, you know architectural or design or historic uh, value. Um, regarding the Peters Annex, I think um, I think that the value that it the historic value that it does have is largely the, based on what I've seen, largely the exterior. Um, I will note that it was um, built by, even though uh, Kevin, as you mentioned, that you know the the uh, Peters High School was torn down in 1962. Um, you know, I don't. Obviously, that's a loss, and you know, it's good to remember that. But I don't see that as strictly relevant to you know, what's before us. I think we should just kind of focus on the the building itself and, and its val and potential value. Um, the architect on it, um, I think it was Charles Baker, was also the architect of the um, South Bar House of Pizza building, the old fire station there. Uh, so, and they both have that kind of cupola. Um, so they do match in, in that way, which I think um, is something to keep in consideration. Um, he also, I was looking him up uh, actually on Kate Madison's um, old blog or some some website that she ran. I, can and I interject that I read that as well? And anybody that Googles um, Peter's School Annex, it's going to be one of the first hits is um, her blog is still um, active. Um, and was, her entry on um, this building is extremely interesting. Yes, it was. And um she had a couple of posts about Charles Baker and just something to note is that he also, um, I think renovated the, uh, Labrie house on, um, or what I refer to as the Labrie house on Lindbrook road, um, which is a beautiful house as well. But, um, so yeah, I, I, I agree that, you know, the inside of it, um, who knows what it looked like as a school on the inside, it could have been very utilitarian as well. Uh, it could be that there wasn't a lot of, you know, interior work to begin with, but obviously what's, in there right now would need a full, uh, you know, gutting, <laughs> I think, right, uh, in renovation. But um, yeah, I think that the the outside does have redeeming qualities, in my in my opinion. Um, and I know that it's not um, strictly within our purview in terms of demolition de delay. Uh, but as I, I did mention at our previous meeting, you know, um, if we find it relevant, you know, and we're allowed to comment on it or um, urge them to to act one way or another without it strictly, you know, strictly being within our purview to prevent them from doing it. So I think that's how I feel about it. Um, again, unfortunately, I was not able to see the inside, but um, I do think that the outside, especially it's kind of matching quality with the South Barhasa Pizza building, which is another building, which, you know, it's, I would argue it's historic and integral to the character of the downtown, even though if you look at the inside of it, you know, it's been used as a pizza shop for how many, <laughs> how many years, right? That's not really, uh, you know, that redeeming and in, in terms of uh, historic character either. But um, so, yeah, that, that's, that's, that's my thoughts on it. 
Um, Michelle. So I have um I have just a couple of thoughts. The inside those photos are really, you know, just taking me back. And I feel that we have given up on that building a long time ago uh, as a town. And I feel that it it really looks very hazardous. Yeah, it 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 did strike it struck me and I think Annie the same way as as from health and environmental. And I know, for instance, um, the part of the discussion today that we had was that um, when they take down the fire station, for instance, they're gonna have some serious um, uh, challenges with regard to underground tanks um, that they've got to remove. Uh, um, I think those connected to septic and uh, I don't know what else. Um, and they're gonna take off some of the asphalt so the be the the net effect is actually going to be a greening of that area, and you know I I'm I, I'm I am very sympathetic to um, Grant's um, position because in my ideal world, um, you know the the exterior of that building um, would be preserved, although it, you know, Grant, the thing about it is it, it is, it's really considerably altered. I mean, the brick is obviously there, um, but in terms of windows, doors, again, the, the surrounding trim is intact, which is good. But um, I, I think the way they, they look at it is that it would be so cost prohibitive to kind of um, bring it up to, um, contemporary sort of um, energy efficiency and, and safety codes that, and it's also a very large and sort of hulking building in a, a kind of an admittedly an odd position on the property when you look at it as a whole. Um, I have some sense that what they're considering is gonna be a much more, um, I guess, harmonious in terms of the whole property. But I, you know, I, I had, to be quite honest, I had heard, um, I, mean, I did mention this to Rob, I had had heard that there at one point had been an interest <clears throat> by um, a, a local builder developer of actually moving that, um, uh, relocating it. Um, <laughs> and there's about only one place it could really go. Um, it, it's very expensive to move, it can be done, but it's extremely expensive. Um, and I, I actually reached out to that um, individual, um, didn't know him, but do now. And I, I said, um, I don't have any, it's not my building to give away, but do you have, but just for the record, do you have any interest? Um, and he said, absolutely not. And he gave um, reasons that were completely consistent with what St. Mark's has said about the difficulty of it from an engineering, environmental, um, energy um, standpoint. Um, let alone the the horrendous logistical costs of actually moving that even a foot. Um, and um, this person said to me, this is a complete non-starter. <laughs> Thank you for calling. We had a lovely conversation for about a, almost a half an hour, but um, it's not going to go anywhere kind of thing. Um, and so that, that also helped me to feel... Um, a little bit better in some ways about our own powerlessness in the situation. Um, so I, I guess I'm in the position of, uh, we'll document as well as we can. I'm gonna go back on a nicer day and take more exterior photos. Um, it is St. Mark's intention, as I understand it, to take these buildings down in early May. So soon. Um, soon as they can get um, clearances from the um, relevant utilities and from the building commissioner. Um, I think they want to move forward. Um, so I, that's what I expect to happen. I don't, I don't, um, again, in an ideal, I, I mean, I made the call to try to, you know what I mean? Can this building, you know, some last minute save? And I, I don't, I don't, and again, the tour today was helped me to better understand why it just, it's not in the cards. Um, so I, you know, it, it's an interesting story though. And I would encourage people to go to the Macris and read, you know, I, the historical narrative um, is quite interesting on this building. And I, I was gonna note that, you know, 
yeah, Charles M. Baker, also the designer of the, the House of Pizza building, the 1926, um, very handsome um, building we have, you know, at the heart of downtown and um, did quite a lot of work, um, area work. And as I understand it, unless I'm mistaken, I just imagine this, I, it wasn't Baker also the architect of the community house. Um, I, I'm, I could be off on that, but I had thought I had read that. Um, I'm not sure. But it's, in, you know, it, certainly the building has an interesting story and with part of a larger, it is the, you know, the last surviving that the macros, you know, report notes that this is all that remains of one of the hubs of activity at South Pearl Center from the mid 19th to the mid 20th century, the Peters High School um, complex. Um, and it sort of gives a very interesting history of, of, you know, what preceded it, the original school building that, um, that was built there in, uh, I believe it was 1859. Well, in, in 1859, Henry Peters, um, one of South Rose's main benefactors of the mid 19th century purchased the evangelical church and paid to have it made over as a schoolhouse, then donated the building to be town, uh, to be used as a high school. It was named Peters High School House in his honor, opened in the fall of that year. So that was, um, 1859, and then um, ultimately, you know, replaced um, by the, and that was, um, the, that building was erected in 1834, and then the, the magnificent building that I've shown, um, the one that was torn down in 1962, was then replace that wooden structure in 1900. So the, there's a long history in that parcel. Um, and, you know, it's sad to to lose out on that stuff, but that's that's where we're at. So I, I, I think, I mean, I feel like we're doing in a way the right thing here, um, simply to, to sort of call attention to it and make note of it and to try to document and save as much of, as, of it as we can. Um, so anyway, um, unless there's anything else, um, let's move on. Is that all right? Mm -hmm. Good. All right. So Kevin, quickly, Kevin. and the rest of this is going to speed up. I know people have got to go. Uh, Kate has got to go. Yeah. Sorry. I do. Okay. Um, quick thing before I go, if, um, when you guys get to the minutes and stuff, um, Michelle, even though you, and you probably already know this, but even though you, um, you can still vote on it if you want, if you've read them and you're comfortable voting on them. You're still allowed to, even though you weren't on the commission at the time. Um, and then I'll have an update if Kevin wants to put it on for the agenda the next time about um, historic house signs. Great. Okay. Great. Thanks, Kate. All right. Sorry, Great. guys. See you later. Bye. Okay, here we go. We'll try to pull this up into another gear. Five Cordeville Road. Um, what do you want to know? Uh, let's put it that way. I mean, uh, you know, we had this um, uh, joint meeting on the, what was that, the, the 28th, the select board, CHOPSI and the Affordable Housing, Housing Trust Fund people. It was a long meeting. Um, it was um, a challenging one. Uh, you know, I was very grateful to have you all there. I, I must say it, it meant a lot to me. Um, it was, I found it extremely <laughs> psychically helpful. Um, and I can tell you, this is where we're at. Um, real estate transactions, as Annie will testify, um, aren't done until they're done. They often go down to the last minute until the, you know, uh, closing papers are signed and everything's stamped and, and um, registered and the tea, you know, keys are turned over and the money <laughs> changes hands kind of thing. It's we not- have, We have a saying that says no roses until it closes in our business. Perfect. <laughs> Perfect. That's what I'm going with. No roses till it closes. So there's a lot of things that can go on. And where this is at right now is 
My understanding is that uh, Mr. Hewling's heirs, um, the personal representative of the, of the estate is one of his sisters, um, Sandra Hewling. My understanding from Sandra Hewling is that um, they are going to enter into an agreement or to consummate uh, an agreement with Kendall Holmes um, to sell the property uh, to Kendall Holmes. Uh, you know, there was a, an initial sort of working agreement, um, as I understand it, between um, the Hewlings and Kendall Holmes um, that was um, had a number of contingencies attached to it. One of them was that the property would perk um, for a four bedroom septic, it only perked for two. Um, another was that it would be conveyed free of encumbrances um, in terms of demolition delay, which of course there was a demolition delay on the property. So, um, but I, as I understand it, um, Kendall Holmes and uh, the Hewlings have, have come to a satisfactory agreement and intend to move forward um, with that transaction. Um, that would mean that at this time, um, the town of South Pro is sort of out of the picture. Um, and there's not really much else to be said about it. Um, I, I will say that um, I think uh, some of the the debate at the joint meeting um, was not helpful um, to the cause, um, not particularly helpful to the, the cause of um, uh, boards and committees working together or getting things done and, and, and preserving historic properties or making for affordable housing. And so that, that part of it, um, is somewhat of a drag, but I'm philosophical about it. Um, you win some, you lose some. Uh, and I think the important thing is to keep trying in good faith. I am I am 100% satisfied in the way um, uh, the commission went about it. And frankly, the way I went about it, um, I have absolutely no regrets. There's not a single thing I would have done differently. And I'm happy to say that, um, I had a very nice note the other day from um, Sandra Hewling um, thanking me um, for the, you know, basically the way I sort of proceeded throughout that process. And I, I must say that I felt from the very first um, as an advocate um, for them uh, and, and not an adversary and um, someone who, you know, wanted them to get a good resolution for the estate, for their family, um, and also, if it had worked out to see their home, um, their brother's home, um, preserved, restored, and um, used as an opportunity, e whether it had been usage by the town as offices or usage as affordable housing um, to give a, a deserving family a chance. So um, that has not worked out. Um, but again, there's no roses till it closes. So I, you know, who knows what the future will bring. Um, uh, the way it's, as I understand it, uh, the subsequent executive session um, of the select board, along with the Affordable Housing Trust Fund um, uh, Committee, uh, clarified and prepared the path that if things change, I think the town um, is interested, prepared, and able to move forward. But uh, where the matter is at now, is that there's a demolition delay until um, October 5th. And, um, you know, the, the healings will move forward um, uh, in the best interest of the estate and of their own family's needs. And I um, completely understand that and, and support them in their decision. So that's where we're at. Um, anybody have any questions? No questions yet, but Kevin, I just want to compliment you on uh, the way you took, took fire, took heat, kept your cool stayed more than more professional than some of the, the conversations that were going on at the select board. That was just a, a crapshoot and I didn't, I wasn't happy to see it. Uh, it was too much infighting and, and other stuff. And if I were to paraphrase, I think you held the, held the uh, torch uh, in a, a really exemplary fashion 
But what I think may have done, and what I was actually going to ask you about, is is the re is the reason that uh, the Kendall Homes purchase going ahead is because they didn't see enough so you know so solidarity uh, at the town to uh, uh, put together a program to take it on, and this is the quicker and, and easier solution. Uh, you know, but, Jim, I I I think it would be wrong of me. Um, on any number of levels to speculate. Um, I all I can say is that I know I know for a fact um, because I talked to um, Sandra that the meeting wasn't helpful. Um, but was it um, decisive? It would be unfair for me to say, and it would be just not healthy or productive. And you know, um, I. I I, 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 you know, I, I would hope for for a different um, way of it being done going forward. Um, but it is what it is, and I don't. I certainly don't have any hard feelings. It, you know, there, there's a lot of right. Is it no roses till it closes? So who knows what could have happened? Um, but I and I. I you know, all I can say is on our end, I think we did it right. I think I did it in the right way. Um, I, and, and a lot of it was, you know, I felt like I was um, trying to go very careful about not getting over my skis and not stepping on people's toes and not um, making assumptions. And so what I tried to do was be very careful about following the terms of the demolition delay bylaw to the letter but also thinking in the proactive way um, of what could be. And then once we, it was after, it was really only after we had made the determination to preferentially preserve the property on January 5th, then you can move forward and say, you know, as I did to the select board chair, gee, I think this is a thing. Could we do it? Um, and, and, um, you know, Ms. Cook quite promptly um, and with real alacrity said, yeah, let's get the parties together and see what we can get going, you know. Um, and then, you know, I think it sort of skidded a little bit sideways from there. But again, all respect to the parties involved. Um, and, and, you know, let's see what the future brings. Um, do you have any insight into what type of an arrangement Kendall struck that's going to work for them commercially? If the thing didn't work for more than two bedrooms, how are they going to get a house that's going to work uh, the numbers? I, I can't speculate about it. Um, I, I think, you know, this is where the idea of bonus rooms and offices um, often come into play in real estate. Um, yeah, so uh, we we actually see this quite quite a bit um where you know you just can't legally advertise it as you know more than a, a two bedroom septic but you can essentially build a four bedroom home you know that looks just like a four bedroom home um you know but you just have to call two of the rooms an office and a bonus room or a, a playroom or or whatnot um it happened it actually happens more than you think um i you know i i don't think it's a good practice. Um, but, you know, for example, in my house right now, I have a, a antique home. There's actually six bedrooms, but it only has a four bedroom septic. So when it was listed on the market, it was listed as a four bedroom. Um, but, you know, it is what it is. Um, so I, I just, uh, Kevin, I wanted to take a, a, a second to thank you, um, you know, as, as Jim did for representing us so well at that meeting. Um, you know, I, I just, I, I just sat there thinking we couldn't, we couldn't have asked for anyone better to, um, to represent us, you know, in, in this type of meeting with, you know, the select board and other boards and commissions, um, you were put in some, some, uh, you know, hard, hard conversations that, um, you know, uh, in my opinion, were a little unfair. Um, and I'm, I'm sorry you had to deal with that, but thank you truly um and and bravo for how you handled everything well that's really kind i i do appreciate it and again i you know i learned a couple things um that's for sure uh but i i, I think 
the way I'm looking at this is, um, you know, let's move forward. I I would I would gladly, you know, um, because I want to make some progress on some of these things. And so, you know, the, um, let's let us continue to be open to partnerships um, with folks like the the Shopsy people um, and whoever else, you know, we end up being able to partner up with um, in an attempt, you know, to do the right thing in town. So um, go ahead, Grant. Yeah, I just want to echo everything that's been said about um, your efforts on this, Kevin. I <clears throat> don't think uh, we could have done it without you <laughs> or could have gotten this far without you anyway. Um, so just a quick question. So did the homeowners specifically indicate that they want to, that they want to go ahead with demolishing it or did they just indicate that they formed a you know kind of the real estate transaction went through or is well was it kind of just implied yeah there i mean their interest was in in they wanted a quick resolution they wanted to get on with their lives um i respect that and understand that completely and i and i sent i sent sandra at, she, she sent me an email saying this is what we're doing are you going to be mad or no i said i honestly i'm not it's fine. You have to do the right thing for yourself, for your family, for the estate. You have a legal obligation. Um, you know, you had uh, an agreement that, you know, and again, th there was, you know, there was also a matter of they have a local attorney. Um, I, I know, you know, at the joint meeting, um, the, the suggestion came up, you know, can we run this by town council? And that was something that I had asked for previous to that. And and supported it 100%. I wanted um, legal input to make sure that we were, um, you know, proceeding um, in the right way. And so it, every, you know, mm -hmm. again, the whole thing sort of went according to a process. And I'm I'm simply not prepared to say anything other than we tried our best. I think we did our best, um, and that. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, I obviously there's some things I wish had gone a little bit differently, but I'm not. Um, I don't want to spend any time crying about it. I just want to move on. So, okay. thank you, um, Kevin. If you don't mind, do you, do you think the healings, um, if magically the town was able to say we want to buy the property before October 5th, do you think they'd be open to an equivalent offer to what Kendall put on the table? In other words, are they neutral on the topic, or they just want to get past all this? it's it's very very hard to say they they i think they felt that you know they had listen the degree the agreement and i'm again i'm not an attorney but the agreement with with the developer um preceded the town's expression of interest and there was a feeling that 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 was perhaps possible um because the contingencies that we were given to understand were um, in play with that, that, con that it was a contingent agreement with contingencies, <laughs> let's put it that way. Um, and so, you know, uh, the whole point of the joint meeting uh, back on the 28th was simply to get all the parties sat down together and to talk um, in a constructive way about what may or may not be possible. And it turns out at this juncture, it was um, not possible. And that was the decision of the homeowner and it's their right to do it. And I support it. Um, and I, and I wish them, you know, all the best, you know? And so now um, if it works out as I'm, I've been given to understand um, the intention is, uh, the property will then be owned by the developer and we have a demolition delay. And there's a reason for that because you don't know, you know, we've made a, a very uh, a good faith, proactive effort to find a way for this building. Um, now, the, if the developer um, buys it, they, they know what they're getting into. They're getting into a demolition delay that um, survives until October. At which point they'll be able to do as they please, um, consistent with the, you know, requirements of septic and the, um, 
you know, if there's anything that have to do with the planning board or with the building commissioner or whatever, and mm -hmm. it will be out of our hands. Um, but there's always a possibility um, something will change between now and October. All kinds of things happen, you know, interest rates and, and economic conditions and who knows what. So um, time will tell, you know, and I, I wish I wish everybody involved um, good wishes and, and, and look forward to working with um, many of those folks again. So, um, and I, I, I will say, I, I, I found, I've met both uh, Hewling sisters, um, uh, Linda, who lives locally and provided access to us for the walkthrough with Habitat, and Sandra, um, with whom I had um, fairly extensive um, exchanges um, by email and by phone, and they're both really lovely people. And so, um, you know, I'm, I'm sorry for their loss and I, I wish them well as they move forward. And we're gonna move forward if you don't mind. Okay, is that everybody? Good. Yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna race through um, this chair of support. First of all, 42 Main Street. That's the Doc Stone House. I spoke to Jim Shea again the other day. The architect is hard at work. They're trying to get plans and drawings up so they can spec out the costs and move forward. It's all still in the green. There are no bulldozers in the weeds. And um, God bless them. They're moving forward. Um, 84 Main Street. This is oh, the Kevin, just, yeah. sorry, one quick question on that. Um sure. do you know when I know that you had mentioned that they were trying to get it done before Jim Shea's term as whatever as he president or chairman? Yeah. Do, he, do you know he, when his term ends? It, June. Okay, thanks. Uh, June. And and um I I, I want to clarify on that. Um that's my wish for him. I, oh. men I mentioned to him when we spoke the other day, I said, Jim, I'd really like you to be able to take a victory lap, you know, while you're still in the office, so to speak. Um, and he sort of chuckled and he said, well, you know, that not even that it would be nice. He's much too modest. Um, but um, I think it would be a nice thing. And I, I hope that it gets done by then. The um, uh, and I, her name is escaping me at the moment, the, the, the current um, vice chair of their board who's coming in will be taking over. Um, he, he, he did say that um, she's fully supportive and their board is really on board. It's not just a one man show. So yeah. he, he's very modest in that respect. He says, listen, it's not all about me. It's not my, it's not my baby. It's the baby of the entire board and the entire leadership of Fay schools, which is one of the reasons I'm so extremely optimistic. Okay, great. Thanks. Um, 84 Main Street Burnett Mansion. As I understand it, um, I, I, I had indicated previously that I didn't want to um, ask Mr. Deli Priscoli um, in to talk to us until he get, could get clear of that um, um, small issue that they're dealing with with the Conservation Commission. And my understanding is that um, that meeting is soon i thought it was this week grant do you know about this i don't think concom met this week so it would either yeah i don't i don't i don't see it on the, it's coming up anyway yeah. they're close to sort of so as soon as they get that buttoned up um then i think it will be fair um to turn to mr deli prisco and ask him to come to historical and chat with us a little bit about um questions and updates um that we have so that's still pending 84 Turnpike Road. This is actually um, an issue that concerns 84, 88 Turnpike, 84 Turnpike and two Woodland Road. And um, as you might recall, um, Mr. David Perry <clears throat> appeared um, at our, in a public comment uh, at our last meeting on the 16th and was talking about this. And he had, um, or has on the warrant, um, it's Article 34, um, seeking to um, rezone from, I believe, business village to business highway, um, those parcels, and it was connected with his interest in purchasing the property, preserving the barn and the farmhouse there, um, and making some sort of conservation um, effort in, as well as a, a I, as I understand it, a business commercial one. Well, what's happened is 
um, as he announced, I believe, at a planning board meeting, and quite possibly at the select board, certainly at the planning board meeting this week, um, that that deal is off because somebody else bought the property. And so he's going to move to indefinitely postpone Article 34. You can't just kill it. It has to be um, indefinitely postponed on the floor. Um, he's uh, he's indicated he's not going to be buying that property. Um, he wanted to come talk to us about that Warren article and seek our support tonight, but um, it's sort of a dead issue for him, <clears throat> I believe, at this point. Now, as it happens, I heard on March 6th um, from... Uh, the individual that I that apparently is going to be the buyer of that parcel, and um, he inquired of me about the demolition delay bylaw. <laughs> As it happens, now I, I should I should tell you that that since I become chair, I find that that actually this is not uncommon. Um, I hear with some regularity either from uh, property buyers or developers or um, real estate professionals um, inquiring about it. And as I, I did with this individual, as I do with all such inquiries, is that I try to briefly explain what we do, who we are, and I send them the link to the demolition delay bylaw. And I say, please read. Um, I also um, uh, tend to um, include information about the adaptive reuse bylaw if it's relevant. And I did in this particular occasion. So I have no idea what's gonna happen. I believe Mr. Perry said on the planning board um, call that he was quite sure that the properties are gonna be demolished. Um, I have no knowledge of that whatsoever. Um, all I know is that um, another gentleman uh, apparently is gonna buy them. He has inquired about the demolition delay bylaw. I have informed him how it works and um, said that um, although we are not the special permit granting authority under adaptive reuse, that's the planning board, we certainly take a position to support adaptive reuse whenever and wherever possible. So stay tuned on 84 Turnpike Road. Uh, St. Mark's Street Park Working Group, um, the March 6th meeting, um, was the one in which uh, the working group finalized uh, a park design. Well, I wouldn't say finalized, finalized a tentative sketch of a park design that will be presented, has been presented to the select board and will be presented at town meeting um, as a kind of vision of more or less um, what will be there. The, the part that there are a lot of uh, details to be nailed down on that not least of which are the question of historical markers and exactly what they would um, mark. Um, I had a notion that <clears throat> Michael Wyson had put forward a plan that called for four landings. And it seemed to me that um, if that plan had been adopted, the subject of the four landings um, uh, might well have been a, the Nipmuc presence, the Native American presence, uh, B, the elements that make up a town that said, that's the stuff that was sort of in the Patty Burns, Fiore, Sally Waters plan about, you know, a mustering ground, the meeting house and the old burial ground, all of which can be seen um, from that location. Third would have been William Washington, um, that the story of the St. Mark's um, steward and St. Mark's Church Sexton um, and his being there. And, you know, the, uh, by the way, as a small aside, the Nick Noble's history of St. Mark's, and, and this line got quoted a lot, notes him as the first free Black resident of Southboro. And, you know, I I, I think with all respect to um Nick Noble and his book and all his wonderful research. I don't particularly like that rhetoric um, because um, Mr. William Washington had a wife, um, also a, a, a woman of color, um, and she came with him. 
<laughs> why, in other words, why he the guy would get all the credit. You know what I mean? And the, the Washingtons also had several children that came with them. So they were the first, you might say, the first free black family um, in South Bro. But, um, you know, I, I, I was a little, you know, they, but some marker about the Washingtons and their experience in South Bro, I thought would be quite interesting. Um, and then finally, uh, a fourth stop would have been, in my mind, devoted to either to and or the plantings in the location and or the archaeological dig. You know, when we had Greg Walber here last time, I, I was really, I, I just think that what he discovered and the whole story that is told by that would really be worth marking. So in any case, the, the plan that the working group decided to forward to the select board and hence the town meeting boiled down the four landings to two, which I can fully support. Um, the, but the question of markers and things like that and how they would be inlaid, um, whether it be freestanding or, you know, low plaques or that is all of that stuff is still to be determined at a later date. Um, so, but that I grant, do you have anything to add to that in terms of like the historical aspect? Because, it, it, you know, I'm just thinking of it in terms of the historical commission. There's a tentative yeah. part thing. We'll see how everybody votes at town meeting. And then if they vote yes, I'm, I'm in support of reconvening the working group so as to iron out these details. And that's when the historical commission will really have to kick it into gear because the, the rubber in a way has yet to meet the road. Um, there's a kind of hovering plan right now, but specifics yeah. are not worked out. Um, I don't really have anything else to add. I do have the plan up on my computer now. I don't know if you want me to, sh I can share my screen. Yeah, whatever. if you'd like to. Um, but other than that, I, I what you said accurately captured everything. Yeah. Well, let, maybe we'll, in the interest of time, maybe we'll just refer people to the working group. Yeah. Because that stuff is published and if somebody wants to go look at the plan go look at it um I, it, I will note just broadly it's essentially a path two circular landings a path connecting the two landings and kind of a path going from the crosswalk um over to the library parking lot um and then some trees and rain gardens and it's very simple um, yeah so uh yeah that's that's about it. <laughs> so that you know, there, there's all this detail to be worked out, and we'll, I, I think we'll have a lot of clarity after town meeting. Hopefully, the the matter gets resolved, and you know we can move forward in some sort of productive way. Um, but we're going to know in a couple of weeks. Um, downtown walking tour. This is again the the historical society has done a lot of work on a walking tour that would commence at one Sears Road work its way up through town, um, move through the new park if it's approved um, in um, the historical society's conception, um, currently stop at the railroad tracks, come back with down Latasquama, back to Maine, down Middle Road, back to Maine, and all the way down to the Burnett Mansion. Um, I've already started lobbying hard on Michael Wyson um, to extend it into East Maine and that area because there's a number of very historic houses over over that way that's still walkable um and also to move it down Cordoval Road and through the rural cemetery and so on but in any case um I invited um Michael uh to come to our meeting tonight to present it and he indicated that he had other plans and was just too busy and couldn't do it so I'm going to keep on him and th this is a project I'd really like to move forward um with Demolition delay bylaw, we sort of committed to sort of get into the language on that um, uh, at our last meeting. I have um, unfortunately been much preoccupied, mainly with five quarter bill, frankly, and have had no time to do anything with it. So that's been kicked down the road a month, um, but we'll get going on that very shortly. Um, old burial ground flag policy. I wanted to bring this up because my suspicion is that we are a, less than a month away from seeing those battle flags pop up again in the old burial ground. 
That's right. And it's, you know how this is. This is like the, you know, it's some sort of horror movie where the, the, the demon won't die. It keeps coming back and, and everybody forgets about it in the off season. And um, all I would, will say is you may recall um, that Debbie Demuria, full disclosure, uh, mother of our uh, Grant Farrington, um, sent to all of us, uh, sent to the select board and the members and the historical commission members back on November 26th, a um, very brief uh, bylaw, succinct bylaw from the town of Plymouth, uh, <laughs> who prompted, I believe by the same um, the issue in Boston, um, you know, that went to the Supreme Court, um, that Plymouth promulgated a bylaw to clarify the issue of the display of flags um, and restricted um, only the, the United States Commonwealth of Massachusetts town of Plymouth and official flags of the US military or POW MIA flags may be flown in any town owned flagpole and so on and so forth. Um, you all got this document. Um, Michelle, I'll make sure that you get it. Um, I, 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 the the English major in me, the English professor in me, um, would like to take this Plymouth document, tighten up some of the rhetoric a little bit, um, and see it applied in Southboro because I think it would give a um, an awful lot of clarity um, to you know what's periodically been a sort of controversial and problematic issue and doesn't need to be. Um, you might recall that I, I spoke about this at um, town meeting and then was um, allowed generously by the select board to sort of expand on my remarks in the meeting, uh, their select board meeting right after town meeting. And you know, one of the main points I made was that I had um, contacted the director uh, the assistant director and the director of publicity at the National Cemetery in Bourne um, for clarification about what flags are flown at um, national cemeteries. And the answer was the American flag, period. Kevin, can I jump in? We, yeah. Not to, not to be uh, uh, interruptive, but we did yeah. cover the length in the past. Yep. And yep. we unfortunately came to the conclusion that it's not our purview, that it's the select board that runs this right. stuff. We're, right. We're, but if we're going to do something about it, then it would be some form of a protest. Yeah. Or, right. So let's. Can we get to that? We know that we know the background. Yeah. Well, I think I think uh, I the reason I'm raising it is because you know that that Plymouth bylaw was sent to all of us and it sort of died right there. Um, and I, I'm using the opportunity um, to hopefully, um, if if the it gets heard um, to remind our friends on the select board that this is the kind of, you know, it's kind of the, the problem thing that blooms every year, causes people a certain distress and then dies off in the fall. And um, uh, I'm, I'm simply taking a, a two minutes to re reiterate um, my willingness to put my, my back into finding a resolution for this because I think we need to do it um, as, as a matter of public policy and a matter of historical accuracy um, and a, a matter of respect for people in town. And again, my position was flying only the American flag um, is the most respectful move you can make towards the veterans because that's the national standard. Um, so, and, and the POW MIA flag, of course, is flown down the hill at the All Worlds Memorial, along with the flags of the various um, branches of the military. So um, there's really no point um, in anything else, um, a clean, uh, respectful, um, restrained. And, and of course, there's also the sort of issue that um, Ms. Demuria has pursued, that this is a problem of, um, and in fact, the Plymouth bylaw goes, directly to this thing that talking about that the town's flagpoles are not intended to serve as a forum for free expression by the public 
The only flags permitted on town-owned flagpoles are those set forth in section 2.2 and that's enumerated as being um, POW, MIA, um, American flag, Commonwealth of Massachusetts or town of Plymouth. Um, and that uh, all other flags are prohibited for being flown on any and all town of Plymouth flagpoles. And I would add any and all town owned property. That's, that's the way to make sure that um, no one speech is favored over any other um, is to um, people can make the private speech with their, with their flags of their choice, battle flags included on private property. Um, but anyway, so I, I don't want to belabor it. Um, Kevin, if I may. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, this is an issue that I've been vocal on in the past. I, I, if I recall correctly, we were all um, in agreement. Uh, Michelle, uh, you know, as you, you weren't with us, but the, the rest of us at least were at the time uh, all in agreement that, you know, uh, with uh, that the battle flags don't have a place uh, in the old burial ground. Um, I would be in favor. Uh, thank you for bringing up this issue. I agree that, you know, it's going to take everyone by surprise uh, in a couple months here, and then um, it'll be too late once they're up. So thanks for getting ahead of it. Um, I would be in favor of um, possibly writing a letter to the select board uh, from the Historical Commission, letting them know our thoughts on this issue, um, potentially advocating for that Plymouth bylaw, if that's what we would like or what changes we would like to see in it. Um, but I do think that, you know, we can have a voice here. Um, and I, I do think that we were all in agreement on what shouldn't be there. And I think we're, we can say so if we'd like to. So um, that's a potential action that I, I wouldn't mind. Um, taking action on, you know, sooner rather than later. Um, I don't know when the flags go up. I seem to remember it was May, maybe, um, but yeah. Well, I think I, I would be in, in, in favor of having a more fulsome conversation about that next time. Um, I, I just wanted to bring it back to people's because it's not, it, unfortunately, it's not an issue that's going to go away, I think. And I, I just, you know, I, I felt obliged um, because I, I, Jim, I do think that we, we should continue to lobby for a say so in the old burial ground in particular. Um, and it, I, I do find it problematic um, that, and I, I have, again, I've said this before and I have to say it again, I have the deepest respect for the veterans grave agent and all the good works um, that that gentleman does um, in the, for the veterans graves in terms of placing the American flags up and down Main Street and the work of the All Wars Memorial. That said, um, the vet, I read the charge of the veterans grave agent and it doesn't have anything to do with making public speech um, in the old burial ground. Um, and that's what those flags amount to. Um, to yeah, let me, let me yeah. say, I think if you were at Polis or if you need a motion to do this, 100% yeah. of us support, I know Kate would as well, right. support that this is incorrect and inappropriate. So my, I'm just suggesting let's let's take an action. Uh, if that means a grant or someone wants to draft a letter, and I would suggest it be an honest, you know, signed by all of us and just drop it off. I think that's the extent of our our leverage here is really just a public, you know, a, a you know a, a noted um, objection. That's all we can do. Well, yeah, I mean, if, Grant, if you want to, you know, draft a letter, and I'm happy to take a look at it, and and. Again, I, I want it to be fully discussed here, maybe next meeting. And if people don't agree with it, we won't send it, you know, because um, I this has to be sure. an organic. And I want to make sure that Kate's here as well, so that all six of us are here and, you know, everybody gets a say so in this and whether or not we want to do anything or not. Um, but all right, I'll leave it at that. Um, lastly, uh, and then we can really race through this is. I had a lovely, lovely um, letter. <clears throat> I don't know. Uh, I'm just trying to pull it up now. I'm, I'm sorry, my outlook kicked me out. Um, email <clears throat> from some eighth graders at the Trottier Middle School. And I wanna give them, it's loading, sorry. Okay, on March 2nd, and this was from 
Lillian Bertanazzi, Samantha Mainville, Rhea Arnand, Tandy Mita, Helena Hoffman, and Zari Ali Khan. And <clears throat> they indicated that they were eighth graders involved at the Trottier Middle School in a civics action project um, looking to improve the education of South Rose history because they feel that the residents of the town have a lack of knowledge about it despite living here. They were kicking around ideas and they wanted to know what we were doing. <laughs> um, so I, I, it took me a couple of days because it, it was a long answer that I gave them naturally. Um, and I, I actually ran through, uh, it indicated that the, um, you remember uh, we kind of went over the master plan recently and what our obligations are under the master plan. And I addressed everything we're doing or trying to do under the master plan. So I explained to them the DDBL, I explained the sort of macros, adaptive reuse. Um, I talked about things we've been up to like the archeological dig um, and the complex route um, and history of that. Um, I explained to them about the National Register District, our effort to get ARPA money and get the signs up. Um, our bid for seats on the tercentenary committee. Um, gosh, um, activity about the historical walk we're trying to work on with the SHS. Uh, gosh, outreach, talk with the Cultural Arts Council, uh, documentation and record keeping, Burnett Mansion, uh, and so on, um, adaptive reuse. I mean, I covered a lot of stuff. Let's put it that way. Um, I had a lovely uh, response um, from, I guess, their teacher, um, a gentleman named Paul Basta, who was quite kind um, and appreciative uh, of the email. And then just today, as it happens, um, an answer from Lillian, Samantha, Rhea, Tanvi, Helena, and Zara. Um, in which um, they, they looked at the information I gave them and they have started to brainstorm plans to further educate the community about South Bros history. I wanted to note that after receiving information from a student survey, they say, the responses were in favor of either a historical celebration parade, which led me to believe, you recall that Annie suggested we do a table at, um, the um, I heritage, always, day. heritage day, I always want to call it town day, heritage day. <laughs> this reinforced um, my uh, will, we're going to do that. We got to do that this year. All right. Because the Trottier eighth graders, I think this is, would be a step in the right direction, mm -hmm. you know. And secondly, historical walk downtown. Well, we got one coming. So, uh, and then they said, um, another one of our ideas is, is a historical documentary about South Bros history. This documentary, if completed, could be watched within the school day during social studies classes. Well, let's talk to this historical society about it. It's not a bad idea, you know, like some kind of video. I, I don't know, you know, maybe the Algonquin, they must have a video program now. I mean, they did it in my day, but. I bet you they do now. Um, so they, you know, they said, uh, if we have any more ideas, please let us know. And so we'll, let's keep the line open. I was very pleased, you know, and I thought, of course, um, part of the reason I, I took a lot of time to write them a long email was because this is part of the, actually our mandate for the master plan is to bring some of this, what we do and, you know, our efforts, um, down to the schools. So I just wanted you guys to know about that. It kind of, it was a feel good kind of thing. Um, Kevin, sorry, yeah. I, I, don't, I don't mean to be sure. butting in here. <laughs> um, just a quick thought. Um, we had talked with Judith Watson last meeting about, yeah. and we didn't really talk too much about what we we're doing, but if there's anything relevant that might've been in that email that would be easy to you think send to her or something just as like an update? It sounds like that's a pretty good update of what we have been doing. So that could just be a good thing to send along to the 
Yeah, I think I could just forward her that or, you know, and, and, but I think there was also some discussion of sort of periodically she would reach out to us and we would like, yeah, this is what we've done kind of thing. But I'm going to keep this email pinned, I think, just so I can quickly, because I had laid out like this actual master plan dictates. Um, and then I tried to answer what we were doing about them, mm -hmm. you know, so and some of them I had better answers than others, you know, and a couple of places I said, this is really not our purview. Like, um, you know, even in the master plan, I think there's, there's one or two places where it's really more the historical societies, um, uh, kind of like, you know, they, there was a, well, there's a line that says work in the master plan, work in conjunction with the Southboro Historical Society to preserve, catalog, and digitize historic records for the benefit of all. And my remark about this was that it was principally the domain of SHS. However, um, you know, I, I've really made it a priority since becoming chair um, with regard to record keeping minutes, supporting documents. And, you know, this is this thing to get the preservation restrictions up on the website and kind of get the website cleaned up. Um, you know, we don't have, we don't even have a file cabinet at this point, but, um, when we can, you know, that I, I think the, the sort of digital record keeping is going to be really critical for us going forward, and of course, and to keep us in good standing in, in terms of OML. So, um, all right, uh, item six, discuss community preservation committee uh, and pilot committee representation. Um, uh, Annie, having given yeoman service at CPC, um, would like to, uh, I think, um, step back and concentrate better on historical exclusively. A, 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 a young mother with a very well-behaved child, because you, Dottie must be sleeping very peacefully tonight. Um, she is now. She wasn't at the beginning of our. Well, well God bless her. So, you know, Annie's got her hands full. Um, and so. Um, I think if you're ready, I mean, we, you know, we would like to sort of um, perhaps nominate someone um, to sort of step forward to kind of take over the reins and, and um, yes. work with the CPC. So um, just, just some really quick background. So, um, as, as you all know, you know, there's a historical seat on the CPC. Um, so not necessarily that we have to have someone, um, but we are down a couple members right now on CPC. Um, and it's just, you know, so, you know, we, once in a while we run into quorum issues, um, you know, it's, it's like, it's, if you, if we're missing one person, it, you know, throws it off. Um, so it's just, it's, um, how do I say this? So I don't want to step back until I know that there's someone else from historical, um, who can kind of step forward, um, you know, just so there's some continuity, uh, for, for that. And I'm not leaving the, um, CPC, you know, short, short staffed, if you will, um, but yeah, I'm kind of just putting it out there again. If anyone is, you know, interested in, um, you know, kind of taking on, on, you know, that role for historic and CPC, um, you know, I'm the floor is yours. <laughs> and Kevin, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. No, you. That, no, that's fine. Um, well, Grant, um, have you an interest in this? Uh... Yeah, um, uh, Annie, Kevin had told me that um, you, you were looking to potentially step down, so I, I've been looking into it. And um, yeah, it is it is something that I, I would be interested in. So um, yeah, I'd be happy to um, take over. <laughs> I mean, um, Ray, that would that would be wonderful, and I I think you'd be a very very good addition. Oh, great. Yeah, I, I find you know the work that you guys do um, interesting. So, uh, um, I also think there might be other transitions on the committee upcoming um, okay. as well. 
Um, so yeah, I think that, that would be great. Well, and I think it's really important. I mean, this is why, um, again, in, in the effort of working as well as we can with different, um, you know, boards and commissions and, you know, um, CPC is obviously hugely important. And, you know, again, I'd like to have um, uh, a more, cons you know, consistent um, and a stronger uh, communication with the Shopsy folks um, going forward. So that um, if Grant, you're, you're willing to make that commitment, um, to me, that would be great. I mean, um, and Michelle, by the way, is st still with us. She's just had to turn her camera off. Um, but we're we still have we're still five um, strong here. So um, I can make a motion to nominate Grant to BRF on CPC. Thank you, Grant, for for saying you would. We have a quorum, so we could make this. Yep, a, uh, we can. Annie, did you second? Sure. Yeah, second. All right. Um, any discussion? Further discussion? Um, no. Uh, well, then let's go to a roll call vote. This would be to. Um, I think we can do this in one false swoop is to accept um, Annie uh, as stepping down from the community preservation, uh, is it committee? Uh, community preservation committee. committee. Yeah, I knew that. I just, as it was coming out of my mouth, I felt like I'm saying something wrong. And to um, endorse uh, Mr. Grant Farrington as the historical commission's um, new representative to the Community Preservation Committee. And as I understand it, as an aside, this would require Andy you to submit a, a letter of effectively resignation and grant you to uh, sure. submit the citizen's interest form and go through the steps, go before the select board and so on, um, but with our full endorsement. So that motion having been made, and seconded. I wish would Kate were here now to keep us on the straight and narrow, but I think we're good. Um, can we do a roll call vote? Um, Mr. Blaschke? Aye. Uh, Annie Pfaff? Yes. Grant Farrington? Uh, abstain. Okay. Um, Michelle? Yes. Uh, and Miller is aye. So that would be 401. Right? Good. It makes me nervous not having Kate here because it's kind of our clerk's uh, expert, but I think we're good on that. So thank you. Um, as to the pilot committee, um, I still haven't heard any more about that. So I think we can defer on that at the moment um, and come back to that. Um, it gives people a little bit more time um, to think about it. Um, Michelle, the, the pilot committee is the, it's gonna be payment in lieu of taxes. Um, and the charge for that calls for a representative uh, from the Historical Commission. I don't offhand recall um, the full composition, but Historical is going to have a seat on that. So um, I wanted to give you a chance to think it over and everybody else. Um, and now that we know that um, Grant is going to go to CPC and he's going to pull back, um, I think we can take a little bit more time to think about it and then hopefully get somebody in the pilot um, committee next time. So um, it looks like uh, Patty's hand is raised. In the ah, oh, yeah, well, the, since this was Patty's um, uh, petition, I would love to hear what you have to say about it. Patty, I'm a, you're on. Hi. Hi, Patty. Um, you just said something in regard to the pilot committee that you were waiting for more information. Could you clarify what that meant? Well, I, yeah, I had, um, I wasn't clear um, where I, I thought, Patty, that um, part of the, the holdup was to, to make sure that, um, am, I, am I incorrect in saying, and I apologize that I don't have it in front of me, um, but that there were several um, at large um, seats and that it required um, to seat the and attain a quorum um, that it required the select board to be able to seat those people. And my understanding was that they had not been at this point located. 
what hadn't been located? That that the people willing to serve as at large members on the pilot committee. Well, you're talking to one of them. I've already been oh. appointed. Okay. 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 Well, that's good. I think that the committee needs the quorum in order to meet. Right. So and how many by postponing you... this further, you're helping to delay the process. Well, I have no desire to do that. Can you tell me what the quorum is and how many people have been seated? Um, I know Capitol has done theirs. Um, I, you know what? I have not checked on senior. I know that select board has done theirs. Um, there's me from open. Um, there's one other person I've tried to recruit from um, citizens um, that I think hoping is stepping up. Um, so I, I don't know what senior center is doing. Um, so there's a couple still um, out in the wind that we don't know about. Can, but can you clarify, Patty, um, are there, there are seven um, seats on this um, committee? Yes. I, again, I'm sorry, I just don't have it in front of me. Are there seven? Yes, I believe so. Seven. So a quorum would be four. Um, and right. you've indicated that three have thus far been seated, capital, select yes. board, and at law and your seat. Um, so, and right. congratulations on that, by the way. Um, so, so if you appoint, if you, if you guys agree to somebody that is then appointed by the select board, we then have a quorum and can start work on the process. I understand and, and respect that. And thank you for the clarification. Um, and I, if that's all you want to say, I will, I'm happy to put it to the group right now. That'd be great. Fair enough. Thank you. Can't guarantee yeah. the result, but I'll put it to them right now. <laughs> no problem. Right. Thanks, Patty. All right. So there you have it. Um, anybody want to do it? Well, having just signed up for CPC, I will uh, withdraw my my name from the running. <laughs> <laughs> really, that was going to be the case. Um, uh, so, and unfortunately, Kate's not here, That which is, Patty, part of what complicates it for us, um, because I thought that Kate, um, I know she had reservations because she works in a townhouse, um, <clears throat> but um, it's a, a, a viable um, option. Jim, do you have any interest in doing this? I unfortunately am pretty loaded up on the outside, Kevin, so no, I'm not able to. Um, and not to put the, the, the new person right on the spot in their first meeting, um, but Michelle, do you have any interest in the pilot committee? So, so Kevin, um... Perhaps I don't really know much about it because mm -hmm. most of the conversations that that Patricia mm -hmm. Burns Fiori just said I couldn't hear because my internet um, at a hotel, so the internet's not great. So if if somebody could fill me in, well, the pilot, you know, the pilot committee. It's obviously I think that this may be payment in lieu of taxes, and it mm -hmm. is to, as I understand it, and Patty will correct me. I'm sure if I'm incorrect that. The idea of the pilot committee is to um, bring together um, some thoughtful types, talk about the issue of uh, the monetary contributions that the private schools um, in town um, make to the toward the the common good, you know, um, mm -hmm. and you know, of course they have lots and lots of tax exempt property, but nonetheless um, do draw on town services. And there's been considerable debate about what share is a fair share um, for the schools. Um, and so, you know, as I understand it, it would be um, largely um, an advisory um, committee to um, assist um, whoever actually ends up speaking directly with the schools in coming up with a sort of approach and a policy um, to try to maximize um, the, the amount of, of contributions that the schools make. Um, if that makes sense, I don't know how well that said that was. And Patty, I apologize if it wasn't as articulate as it might've been. Um, I believe that's it's, 
I believe it's mainly a like a research, like researching other policies throughout the state and what's been effective and what hasn't. Like, it's not directly negotiating with the, the school. Okay. Themselves. Right. Well, I mean, it, it actually sounds very interesting. And unless it meets once a week, I think that I could um, to volunteer some time doing something like that. I, well, that I, I I think I can fairly say that um, <clears throat> has some hey, mentorship. Yeah, I think I can fairly say that I think you know, and I, that Kate um, would rather not. Um, I, I feel that um, as chair, I'm quite it's surprisingly time consuming, um, and so if. Michelle, if you're willing yeah. to do it, I think you would get a quick nomination and a quick um, second. Michelle, this is Jim. In, in fairness, if you want to, uh, I don't yeah. know if Patty can tell us this, but if a person can audit a couple of meetings, a meeting or two, just to see what's involved, um, that might be a way for you to understand mm -hmm. what you're into. Uh, although I don't know if I, help, I think Patty was saying that possibly they can't meet because they don't have a quorum at all. Is that the issue? <laughs> at present, right. So I, I, you know, listen, um, Michelle, if you're willing to try this, um, and I certainly don't want to hold back the wheels of democracy in town by not sending along a name. Um, if, if you're willing to try it, I would say go for it. If you don't like it and you don't want to do it anymore, then one of us will have to um, suck it up and take over. Maybe me, you know. Um, so if you're amenable, um, somebody's going to nominate you. Okay. I think, um, I think I'm willing to give it a go. And like I said, I would definitely need a little mentorship and, and to really figure out, to do a good job. Well, yeah. And you'll have, of course, you know, the, the, your fellow pilot um, committee members, mm -hmm. I think, you know, in a sense, I, you know, I know you've been around South for an awful long time. You know the schools. You know, mm -hmm. you know what the what the feelings are. And so I think, um, you know, all they're looking for is a smart um, person on there to to kind of um, dig into some of the facts and try to come up with a good strategy for approaching the schools. So um, I'm going to nominate Michelle Hokinson to be the historical commission's representative on. The pilot committee. Seconded. Uh, Jim has seconded. So um, we'll do a quick roll call vote. Um, Mr. Blaschke. Aye. Uh, no, let me get this right because Kate's going to be so mad at me. This is to, you're voting to um, endorse Michelle Hokinson as the Historical Commission's official representative on the pilot committee that his motion has been made and seconded. Roll call vote, Mr. Blaschke. Aye. Annie Pfaff. Yes. Rand Farrington. Aye. Miller is aye. And Michelle, um, you can vote for yourself or abstain or- Abstain. As, as you please. All right. So that would make it four zero one. Uh -huh. And Michelle Hokinson, you are. How's that, Patty? That's great. Thank there you, you Patty. Um, so now we have our rep for the pilot committee. All right. Quickly. Um, public comment policy. I put this on here because, you know, as you know, um, pursuant to a, a recent state Supreme Court decision, there's been some discussion about public comment. Um, and I wanted to just um, get out in front on this and say that I am all for public comment. As long as I'm the chair of the Historical Commission, there will always be public comment. Um, I don't see any reason um, to lock it down. I'm happy to hear what people have to say. Um, and in fact, what I wanted to put to you is that typically um, I have listed public comment at the end of the meeting. Um, at, but as we just saw, I, you know, if, if someone's here for a particular issue and it comes up um, and they put their hand up, uh, you know, 
as the case with um, Ms. Burns Fiore just now, I just recognize them and let them talk. I mean, I don't see the big deal. Um, I think you should, you know, be open to that and treat people respectively. I find this sort of impulse um, as a reaction to the to the recent court decision, this impulse to sort of shut down public comment altogether as a kind of protective measure is somehow deeply undemocratic, quite frankly. Um, and in fact, um, what I wanted to put to you was that I am perfectly willing to list public comment both at the beginning and the end of our meetings because um, sometimes it's sort of annoying if you've got something to say um, to have to sit through three or four hours our meetings don't go that long, but you know, sit through a couple hours um, to wait to hear it. Now that does sometimes delay if somebody gets on at the beginning and you know really wants to go for an extended time. I we haven't been in a position to have to sort of put time limits on people because generally, um, <clears throat> I don't think we generate that much heat. <laughs> um, but who knows. I can, uh, I think we all would support that. I, I would be, I'd suggest that we uh, establish a 10 or 15 minute limit to a public comment at the beginning of the meeting, as well as available, you know, as much time as needed at the end. Well, I think the, so, the select board has gone with a, a try to enforce a three minute limit, which I would be in support of that. I think that's plenty, quite frankly. Three um, minutes per, per commenter. Per commenter. Yeah, right. And, you know, at the, at, at, <clears throat> That rule can be, you know, relaxed if if it's the comment continues to be productive. And you know, I, I just I just wanted to I, I just wanted to say I thought it was really important because I I see a lot of chatter talking the blog and stuff about well we uh, should limit this everybody should be fearful I don't know we treat people respectfully listen to what they have to say we don't have to agree on everything we just have to be decent to each other. Um, but I, I thought it was important to say that, and I, I just want it out there that this, that's personally what I believe in. Um, so if it's all right with you, I'm gonna start listing public comment at the beginning and at the end, mm -hmm. and, and hope people that will, um, will take that in the spirit it's offered as um, you know, we wanna hear from folks. Mm -hmm. um, all right, so now we're at approved many minutes of- We need to vote on that. Uh, I don't think so, okay. because I can, the chair can write the agenda, but I still wanted to put it in front of you guys um, and see how you reacted. Um, I, I just wanted to say, I totally agree with everything you said, Kevin. Um, I would personally would be against a time limit. Um, I feel like we don't get enough public comment anyway for it that to even be warranted. And when we do get public comment, I think it can be productive and kind of sometimes turn into maybe a conversation. Um, right, right. Yeah, which, no doubt. You, know, you don't want to be cutting someone off by saying- Well, uh, we yeah. No longer, I, yeah. Yeah, I, I just think it, it it might be nice to have that in the back of one's mind in, in sure. the event that things start to get out of control. Um, I think that's always at your discretion if someone is really just being disruptive by going on too long, you can cut them off, yeah. Yeah, and always it's always with the sense. I don't think anybody wants to just you know just keep going. It's more like um, sometimes folks, and it, it's difficult, you know, don't realize that they're kind of really getting into waters that we can't respond to, um, which you know I think did happen to us once um, fairly recently, and you know, but it wasn't a big deal to me. Um, Anyway, so approved meeting minutes of February 16th and February 28th. Um, I, I had a look at those, both sets of those minutes, um, made some emendations, sent them back to Kate, and she, I know she enacted them and sent them back out. So I, I don't have anything further to say. Um, on February 16th, taking them one at a time, does anybody have any further um, corrections um, that would need to be made? I do. Um... Could we actually start with the 28th first? I just have less. Um, okay, yeah, let's let's go with the 28th. February 28th um, was the joint meeting. I've got to take off. I, I hit my limit uh, time-wise. I've got uh, another commitment I have to go. I apologize. Okay, uh, as long as we're watching, I'm just watching quorum. Uh, Michelle is still with us, so we're still fine on quorum. All right. Hey, Jim. Thanks, Jim. Hey, sorry about that. See you guys. <clears throat>
by Michelle and Grant. Okay, so we're again, it looks like three, but we have four. Michelle Hokinson is still with us, so um, we're still good on quorum. So February 28th. Yeah, I'll just go quickly here. Um, line 51, um, there are two periods, so I deleted one of them, minor stuff. Uh, line 66, uh, there's a missing period after the first habitat on that line, so I added that. Line 84, uh, the word input was spelled incorrectly, so I just fixed that, and that was it. Any anything else, um, Annie or Michelle? No. Good. Well, thanks for catching those, Grant. I I, I didn't see them. Um, so uh, with that, um, we have a motion to accept the February twenty eighth minutes as amended. Um, and Kate will catch up um, with these on the tape. I make the motion. So moved. Or so second, Andy, whatever, second. second. <laughs> All right, so Grant makes the motion. Um, Annie seconds. Um, roll call vote. Annie? Yes. Grant? Yes. Michelle? Yes. And Miller's aye. So 4-0 um, to approve February 28th minutes as amended. Um, now, February 16th. Actually, um, I just really, I forgot that Kate said at the start of the meeting that she had already seen my edit, so I don't think I need to go through them unless I don't know I don't think you all have seen them but um Kate has so do you want me to go through them or would you rather just if we're gonna vote uh and we haven't seen them we probably you should probably okay yeah yeah you should okay I wasn't sure um okay uh so this is February 16th I have more on this one so it might take a minute um, line 22, uh, the word accepted was spelled wrong, so I fixed that. Um, line 33, it had said a foundation from a Burnett house. I just kind of said from a house from the Burnett estate, just to clarify. I think it was the estate, is that correct? The foundation on the yeah, owned by the family. Um, so I thought Burnett, a Burnett house was okay. Oh, okay. Um, we can we can leave that then. That's okay. Fine. Um uh line 46. Uh it was talking about that an area where the a walkway a walkway will be. Just I changed that to be is planned instead of will be, just in case it doesn't happen. <laughs> Um, uh, something more substantive, um, line 57 or 58, uh, Mr. Farrington asked if Dr. Waller saw the map based on the GPR completed in 2006. Um, I ch changed it, um, just to clarify that Dr. Waller, uh, stated that he had not personally seen the map, but that it had been reviewed by the firm. Um, that was what he said to me that he hadn't looked at it himself. Um, and I thought the way it was written, it could have been taken that he had. So I just wanted to clarify that. Yeah, the, yeah, the line I have is Dr. Walworth confirmed the map was reviewed by the firm. Yes. So I just want to clarify that he hadn't, because I asked if I asked if he had seen it and he said no. So right, wanted... right. Yeah, that's the way it, it currently reads in the in the draft that. So okay. that, that's the emendation you're making? Uh, that he had not personally seen the map, but that it had been reviewed by the firm was what I had written. Oh, okay. So that, and what, what had been there was, I'm, I'm sorry, this is getting belabored, but Dr. Walber confirmed the map was reviewed by the firm. That's the yeah. line that you're changing. Yes. Okay. That Yeah, that makes sense. Okay, great. <clears throat> um. Line 94, um, I thought it was just acceptable to say that the, own, uh, the owner passed away. I didn't think we need to say what the cause was. 
So I deleted from COVID-19. I see. Um, just didn't think it was necessary. Yeah, line nine. Yep. Um, sorry, I'm almost done here. I have two more, I think. Um, line 105 was a substantive one. I think it, I'm looking at a red line version, so I can't see what it said, but it was said something like Michael White Jen um, gave a master landscape plan to both he and Ms. Danza or something like that. Um, sorry, I'm, I'm looking at the edited copy. Um, I just want to clarify that we still actually don't, are not sure that it is the landscape, master landscape plan. We did receive a landscape plan from him, but Melissa Danza stated that she wasn't sure if it was quote the master landscape plan. Um, so I had changed it just as an attempt to Mr. Miller stated that a landscape plan was provided for 84 Main Street by Michael Weishan to both he and Ms. Danza, but that Ms. Danza indicated that this is likely not the quote master landscape plan referenced in the preservation restriction. Is that more accurate? Well, I think that's that may well be uh, if that's your understanding of, of Melissa Danza's uh, reception or under, or take on the document. That that's fine by me to convey it that way in the meeting minutes. I think um, I think Mr. Wyson would um, suggest that that is the okay the, as I understand it. So uh, you know, I'm in the middle like the guy going, he thinks it is the document and there isn't any more than that. And she thinks maybe there is something more than that. And that, that can, and so your rhetoric to clarify that, that there's some a disagreement. Um, I can take what, out that second section and just say, Mr. Miller stated that a landscape plan was provided. Yeah, that's fine. Okay, and just cut the rest of it, that, that would, okay. Um, I just yep. wanted to clarify because I don't think personally that we've I've seen the master landscape plan yet. So I just want to make sure that we don't say that right. we saw it. Yeah, it, it 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 comes down to the fact that I think things were less um perhaps carefully documented than than hmm. this would like. Um so and, and that's it for me. Okay. Um and Kate already has um, this copy. Okay, good. Is that okay, um, Annie, Michelle, with those? Mm -hmm. All right, so yes. then let's go with, um, I'll make the motion to accept the um, February 16th, 2023 minutes as amended. Second. Okay, so moved and seconded. Um, roll call vote. Annie? Yes. Grant? Yes. Michelle? Yes. Miller is I as well, so that's four zero to approve um, February sixteenth minutes as amended. Um, any other business? I have none, so we are at public comment. Anyone um, has a comment? Welcome, and um, there is a hand up. Let me just see. I can't see who that. Oh, is that Patty? Um, mm -hmm. Go ahead, Patty. Thank you for moving forward with that um, nomination. And Michelle, I thank you for stepping up to uh, sit on that committee. If, I mean, I don't know whether I can say this without <laughs> violating some kind of open meeting law, but if you have questions regarding um, how the process happened to get this committee or what the committee is charged to do, which is, as essentially Grant said, uh, do the, or maybe that was Kevin, I'm sorry. Uh, do the research and comparative analysis of other schools and other towns, look into the state issues and advise um, those on the select board uh, responsible for negotiating with schools. If you have any questions regarding that, please feel free to reach out. Will do. I assume that you have Thank a you. Southboro town email. Um, yes, it's, okay. ooh, I think it's Ifiori. Um, okay. Southboro. Okay. Ma. Thank you. Com. Thank you, Patty. Thank you. 
Okay, um, thanks, Patty. Um, anybody else? Public comment going once, going twice. Sold. Um, and thank you, everyone, for coming. Um, we uh, can entertain a motion to. Oh, wait, I'm sorry. I did miss one thing. Um, we need to schedule uh, an April meeting. And my apologies for that. Uh, I would suggest the 19th. How is that for folks? Wednesday, the 19th. Thursdays are generally better. Were we? Well, today is a Wednesday. Do we? Yeah. What day do we normally meet? Well, we have been doing Thursdays. I because Wednesdays are better for me. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. Of nudged it. Yeah, uh, I'm afraid because my my own schedule this term is um, a little tough. Um, yeah, I can I can make Wednesdays work. That's fine. And, well, that's lovely. How about is Wednesday the nineteenth? Okay for you, Grant. Yeah, Wednesday works for me. Um, Let's, and if we we can reach out to Kate right. and Jim. We're two fifths missing, so we may have to make an adjustment. Um, Michelle, how does Wednesday the nineteenth work for you? It works. Good. All right. So let's. I'm going to pencil that in Wednesday the nineteenth, and um, I will reach out to Jim and uh, Kate and confirm if we have to change. Uh, all right. Thank you. Um, now I'll take a motion to adjourn. Did we want to do May too while we're at it? No. No. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Not yet. Um, that that, that's very sweet of you, but okay. no. Okay. <laughs> we'll get to, 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 one day at a time. Sure. It's one day at a time with me right now. Um, <laughs> all right. Somebody want to move to it? You know, um, Kate. I think I, I just, uh, motion motion to adjourn. Second. All right. Moved and seconded. Uh, roll call vote to adjourn. Annie. Yes. Grant. Aye. Michelle. Yes. Miller is aye. We are adjourned at 9.29 p.m. Thank you and good night, everyone. Thanks, everyone. Good night. Thank you. Night.